We got camera people in here, ABC and a bunch of others. All right, I'm starting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from the International Amphitheater in Chicago. I'm Jim Bohannon, where Joe Frazier is about to make the try back up the road. He wants to be the heavyweight champion again. And here he comes into the ring, smoking Joe Frazier. 37 going on 38 years of age, dancing around the ring in a purple and white robe. He looks happy, dancing. Joe Frazier, happy to be back in a boxing ring for real for the first time in five and a half years. He'll be fighting Jumbo Cummings tonight in the first of what will be two attempts by legendary heavyweights to make it back up. The other, of course, Muhammad Ali, who next week will take on Trevor Burbick. Comparisons are naturally inevitable between Ali and Frazier in their comeback attempts, their names inextricably linked because of the three great fights they had for the championship. As for age, Ali will soon be 40, Frazier 38. At that age, it could possibly make a difference in their uh, comeback attempt. Now Jumbo Cummings has come into the ring. Jumbo Cummings in the blue and white robe. A record of 17 and one. Asked how he would treat Joe Frazier in the ring. He said he was not worried about hurting Joe Frazier. He was afraid of killing him. As a matter of fact, Cummings says he even has his lawyers ready just in case it's needed. That, of course, a tragically ironic note to Jumbo Cummings' career because it began in prison. Let's go now to ring announcer Ben Bentley for the introductions. One has to wonder how Joe Frazier feels standing in a ring, hearing the national anthem sung five and a half years since it last was done for real. It's different now, five and a half years older. The purse, 80,000 tonight for Joe. Far and away with the smallest purse he's had in many, many a year. 10,000 will go to Jumbo Cummings. He is on his way up. Joe Frazier, 
Well, he's on his road to one of two things. If he wins tonight at all impressively, he might get his shot at a title. If he loses, by any margin, it is almost certainly the end. Once again, back to Ben Bentley, ring announcer. The officials for this contest have been appointed by the State Athletic Commission, and your judges are Collins Brown, Harold Maravich, the attending ringside physician, Dr. George Tovar, the timekeeper is Al Tremere, and the referee for this contest, Nate Morgan. This is the final and feature bout of the evening. Ten rounds heavyweights from Chicago, Illinois. He's wearing the blue and the white trunks. He tipped the scales this afternoon. Two, two, three, one half pounds. Jumbo Cummings, coming. the two fighters get their instructions. Here, here are the instructions. The referee giving the instructions now to Jumbo Cummings and Joe Frazier. Ten rounds. For Joe Frazier, again, a five-and-a-half-year retirement. Finally ended, although at one point just three years ago, he did think about coming out to fight South Africa's Kali Kanutsi. Hepatitis interrupted that. But tonight... Nothing has interrupted it, not even uh, fears on the part of some that Joe might have suffered brain damage in his two devastating losses to Muhammad Ali and particularly the losses to each to George Foreman. Round one is underway. And Joe still moving as he always did, up and down. Some body shots in the clinch there from Jumbo Cummings, who has a big advantage in height and reach, although six pounds lighter in weight. The familiar Joe Frazier moves that we have not seen for five and a half years. Hey, we can't see nothing. Solid punches. Sit down. Sit down. Solid punches in the clinch. Cummings can hit. But Frazier can take a punch. He has taken so many in his career. Joe moving as well as he ever did. Despite his reputation as a banger, he always could move. But he got tagged a lot. Tying each other up, a little waltzing, a little feeling each other out. And they are throwing some haymakers. Some of those are landing from Cummings. Joe does not appear to be particularly effective at this point. Pushing each other around the ring. No stylist, certainly Jumbo Cummings. There went a first Frazier left hook of the night, but it missed and didn't have much on it. Certainly, it didn't look like Joe Frazier's left hook. Certainly, Cummings getting the better of it in the clinches, landing some good solid shots to the ribs, and almost any punch from a man of Cummings' size is a solid shot. An exchange of jabs and a right uppercut from Cummings. who certainly is getting the better of it at this stage of the game. Joe's not been able to unland uh, a punch yet that would be considered particularly effective. Already Joe Frazier taking some leather, thinking perhaps of the last time out the Nassau Coliseum five and a half years ago when five rounds of punching did him in for what many thought would be the last time. And another clinch, the first of, or rather about the twelfth of what will be several hundred perhaps in this fight. The Frazier left hook lashes out, and Cummings mugs at it. It missed. Joe hasn't landed a punch yet that could be considered substantial. Cummings driving Frazier into the ropes, and Frazier is taking some shots, a lot of those landing on elbows. 30 seconds left in round one. Cummings has seemed to follow the approach that if you throw 100 shots, you'll land 50, and he must be approaching that ratio so far. Cummings mugging. Again, Frazier launches the left, and again, it does nothing, looping around Cummings. 
The size different, obvious. Joe, very stocky, perhaps even stockier than he used to be. There's the bell, ending round number one. One round of competition back for Joe Frazier, who hadn't seen it for five and a half years. Jumbo Cummings, if you don't know his history, began at the age of 16. He drove a getaway car in a store robbery. It turned out that the store owner was shot and killed. Jumbo Cummings spent 12 years in prison. The first six of those, he was a chronic troublemaker. The last six at the Stateville Prison in Joliet, Illinois, they introduced something new, a boxing program. And the boss of the barn, as Cummings called himself, quickly took on this. As he put it, it was very natural for him. It's just street fighting cleaned up a bit. Jumbo Cummings went on to the pro ranks and now sports a record of 17 and one. And one loss coming at the hands of Ronaldo Snipes, a fight that made Jumbo Cummings look perhaps as clumsy as uh, he really is against a class boxer. Ronaldo Snipes, of course, went on to uh, challenge Larry Holmes for the title and uh, almost won it. Round two underway. Frazier charges out of the ring and throws two quick left hooks, neither one of which hits. Cummings answers up. Another left hook. Joe certainly is smoking, but he's not hitting. Again, in close, it's all Cummings. There haven't been that many long-range punches. A few jabs, such as you just saw, but they're feelers. Neither one of these fighters lives or dies with a jab. They're both setting up for the big one. Cummings, we know, has one. He's got 12 knockouts in those 17 wins. Joe Frazier once did. Shots to the body, and a body which, frankly, from this vantage point, looks a little bit soft. Joe Frazier does not look in the shape that he once was. A little touch of fat, certainly not the impressive physique of Jumbo Cummings, and he's been taking shots to the, ch to the chin, the ribs, and the stomach, particularly in close. Neither fighter able to open up. Certainly the old Joe Frazier attack, attack, attack is not particularly in evidence. He used to chase him around the ring. He's had no better than perhaps the half of it in this fight as far as aggression. There went the big left hook. Cummings mugs because once again it hit nothing but air. A right uppercut. Joe landed the first real punch of the fight that he's landed, a right uppercut. Ironically, the same punch that did him in when George Foreman fought him the first time, and Joe was never noted for that right hand. Maybe he's learned something in five and a half years of sparring with Son Marvis. Frazier coming on a bit in round two now, landing the first real punches of the fight, but getting a few back in return there. Again in the clinches, the body punches. I think Jumbo Cummings has seen that roll of fat too. He tends to see how much muscle is left underneath it. Joe bobbing, landing a shot to the stomach. But Cummings is still getting the better of it in the clinches. The clinches have constituted about 60% of this fight. Welcome, Joe. Frazier's laid off for a while now. There went the left hook up on the ear, no damage done. Joe does look older, he looks fatter. On sheer physique, there's no question who would win this fight. Ring experience, that's something else again. Some good punches from Cummings. He pushes Frazier across the ring. And still works on that stomach. Then up to the chin, back to the stomach. And there's the bell that ends round two. A better round for Joe Frazier, but by no means a superb round. And probably once again, Jumbo Cummings round. Come on, Joe. Joe Frazier's career, of course, began in Philadelphia when he was working in a meatpacking plant after coming north from his South Carolina childhood. He began boxing. Never showed a tremendous amount of potential, but he showed an awful lot of heart. Ultimately, he got into the Olympic program. For those who don't recall, only that he won the Olympic gold medal, you may forget that, in fact, he lost the Olympic trials back in 1968, or 64, I should say. Lost him to the fellow by the name of Buster Mathis. But in winning that final bout for the Olympic team, 
Mathis broke his jaw, or rather broke his uh, hand. Frazier got the nod as the alternate, and he went on to win the gold. And later, of course, beat Mathis. Here's round three, and Joe Frazier certainly smokes out of the corner. He's met coming three quarters of the way across the ring each time. Throwing the left hook, a jab, two jabs in succession, and there was a good left hook. The first one Frazier has thrown tonight, a nice left hook. Frazier stumbled a bit, but it was hard to believe that was from a punch. Joe still does the crisscross arm movements, the up and down. Cummings still leaning on him, and for a man of his size, that in itself will have a telling effect eventually. And Joe still takes a lot of leather. One good punch, really, the Frazier's landed, that left hook that you just saw. Stay in tight, Joe! There was a right uppercut in the second round that did no real damage. And it's hard to say that that one did either. Another shot to the belly. Those body blows by Cummings are bound to have an impact. No visible marks on either man yet. Let's put your head down. Some head shots as Cummings again leans in. Belly, face, belly, face. Cummings has studied about 100 hours of Joe Frazier fights. He thinks he knows the way to beat him. So far, he's doing it the same way he's fought most of his fights, leaning on people. Neither fighter's been down. We're in round three. There was a good shot. A right hand that jolted Joe Frazier's head back. And some more shots. Lefts and rights, and then back into the rope, and more shots to the body. And clearly, Jumbo Cummings has taken early command of this fight. Frazier content to stay on the ropes where once he pinned people. Unlike Muhammad Ali, he does not know the rope dope that well. A nice, nice left jab from Joe Frazier. And a left hook to the ear. And a shot to the chin, a left hook to the chin. Joe Frazier is trying to get his punches in. Jumbo Cummings seems totally unmoved by it so far. We're in round number three. Joe Frazier and Jumbo Cummings, a wild left hook that left Joe Frazier open for a short right punch. And the short right got through from Jumbo. It's been a wrestling match like this most of the night. 20 seconds left in round three. Joe Frazier in the purple, Jumbo Cummings in the blue trunks. That's three rounds have now gone by the boards. All three would have to be scored for Jumbo Cummings. He's grinning, mugging in his corner. Joe Frazier taking some advice now from his son, the gentleman standing in front of him in the white. Marvis Frazier, undefeated young professional heavyweight. Joe Frazier, after he won the Olympic gold, of course, went on to a professional career. He became an undefeated boxer. He won a world heavyweight championship of his own design by beating Buster Mathis. After that, he uh, fought Jimmy Ellis for the undisputed title after Muhammad Ali had the title stripped away from him. And after that, of course, Joe Frazier knew that he would never be considered the people's champion until he had beaten Muhammad Ali. That set up the big one. Ali Frazier won. And of course, it was won on a decision by Joe Frazier. We're into round number four. Jumbo Cummings and Joe Frazier. And there was a good shot landed. It's hard to believe this one will go 10 rounds. The punch that did end Joe Frazier the first time in his career was a right uppercut from George Foreman. You've seen a few of those thrown tonight by Jumbo Cummings, not a lot. Most of the punches down under have tended to go to the stomach. And I believe Joe Frazier has been hit below the belt. He grimaced, bent over. 
And now they go back at it. That can be a very debilitating punch, intentional or not. Round four. Jumbo Cummings and Joe Frazier, smoking Joe, trying to make it back and taking a lot of shots. If he can't block a punch from Jumbo Cummings, you have to wonder what he would do against a Larry Holmes, who would have, by this time, I think, jabbed Joe right out of the ring and back into oblivion. Jumbo telegraphs his punches, and yet Joe hasn't gotten the mailgrams very often. And once again, Joe's on the ropes. Come on, Rob, break it these men have leaned on each other as much as they've thrown punches. But 80% of the good ones have belonged to Jumbo Cummings. Eight years junior to Joe Frazier. Joe's been game, but he hasn't shown a lot of the ability that once sparked his career to the heavyweight title. Frazier still coming in, shooting punches up as he had to do through most of his career. He's a short heavyweight. There was the left hook that missed again. That one didn't, in close, but not a clean punch. And now Cummings is all over him on the ropes again. Even when Cummings' punches are partially blocked, they are strong punches. And again, the mid midsection has got to be suspect. Joe Frazier, much to my surprise, appears to have a little bit of a roll around the middle. That could be the muscle of advancing age, and then again, maybe not. 30 seconds left in the round number four. And so far, it's been almost entirely Jumbo Cummings, hoping this will launch him to a title fight. At the very least, it should earn him a shot with a top 10 ranked fighter. The long reach illustrated there. Cummings leaning out. Oh! Some good punches from both fighters in close. Neither man seems to be affected. And there's the bell. And we're into round number five very shortly. One of the big questions about Joe Frazier was how much is left inside him. Even when he won the first Ali fight, he was hospitalized for about a week or two. He lost the second Ali fight. He lost a devastating knockout, about four knockdowns to George Foreman in the Bahamas. Then the Thrilla in Manila. The Thrilla in Manila, which of course uh, saw Muhammad Ali knock Joe Frazier senseless after 14 rounds. And then one final fight five and a half years ago, that one against George Foreman again. A fifth round knockout. As you can see, the corner working over Joe Frazier. His son, Marvis, obviously concerned that his father has not shown a great deal so far. Round five is coming up. Frazier with a jab. Poking jabs back by Cummings. And there was a tremendous left hook from Joe Frazier. Cummings mugs and throws a good punch right back. Several of them hitting on the chin, then back to the body. Cummings' strategy is quite obvious. Work on that body, work on that body. He likes that jelly belly. And one must say that's how you would describe Joe Frazier from the chest on down. That had to take a lot out of Joe Frazier. He threw one of the thunder hooks, and it didn't seem to do a lot to Jumbo Cummings. Cummings had watched the fight films of Frazier and said, in the later years, the big Frazier left hook wasn't what it used to be. A light left from Joe. Another one. He still believes in it. The left hook that used to lay him out. But he's thrown several tonight. It used to take only one. But Joe can't hit his man. The reflexes aren't gone. Some thought that might be a factor. And now he's getting in some punches. It's hard to tell if they're having any impact on Cummings or if he's just a good actor. He certainly doesn't appear to be hurt. But Joe may be coming on more than he was. Quick Tillis, the heavyweight who fought Mike Weaver for the WBA championship. Oh, yeah. Right cross. Good right cross by Joe Frazier. But again, Cummings' legs as strong as ever. The chin still stuck out. And certainly no indication that he was the least bit bothered by it. Head snapped, but that was it. 
Certainly Joe Frazier now is beginning to find his range. Quick Tillis, as I was saying, is of the opinion that uh, Jumbo Cummings will run out of gas. Not the old man, but the young man may run out of gas. And something of a warning issued to Jumbo Cummings, holding the back of Joe Frazier's head. Round number five, Jumbo Cummings and Joe Frazier's big comeback. Feeling around, and another good left hook. But is he trying to knock down a redwood tree with a toy hatchet? They don't seem to be doing the job. And the punches are coming right back now from Jumbo Cummings with 30 seconds left in round five. Cummings leaning on the ropes, doing a little alley rope-a-dope. He seems unconcerned. So Frazier says, come and get me, Jumbo. Come and get me. Now Joe taunts Cummings. Joe seems a lot more confident than he was earlier. Bobbing, weaving, grinning, and throws the big left hook. And that one seemed to have an impact. I don't think Jumbo Cummings was acting on that one. Five rounds are history, and Joe Frazier, who in the beginning was taking a terrible body beating and a few good shots to the head, was missing with the left hook, has suddenly begun to find the range. And you begin to wonder if the tide is turning. Not at all like most people thought it would. Most thought that if Joe had anything left, it would be shown in the early going. And that as time went on, he would tire. It can't be said after five rounds that either fighter is tired. But Joe Frazier seems to have shaken off a lot of ring rust in those first five rounds. It's only a question now of who is going to land the really big one. It would be very, very hard to believe that this slugfest could possibly go the entire ten rounds. Jumbo Cummings has never been knocked out. Frazier getting under, trying to get inside. Uppercuts, those are the uppercuts that Cummings has been told to throw. Frazier is supposed to be a sucker for uppercuts. Now back to the body. And in close. And that was a good right cross, a short chopping right from Jumbo Cummings. The waltz goes back on. I don't hear any music. Another left jab from Joe. Now Frazier seems to be holding his own in some of those clinches. The inside punches are about a 50-50 proposition. And they walk some more. Fighting Jumbo Cummings is not a way to make you look artistic in the ring. Both men express great confidence before the fight. And a good Joe Frazier left jab, and he doesn't have the reach on this man. He's been reaching with that jab. Joe Frazier looks as flabby as it can be, but he doesn't act it right now. He's come on in the last two rounds. We're in round number six of a scheduled 10-rounder, Joe Frazier's attempt to come back. Chopping left Joe. inside. He's directly over us now, ringside. Joe spins coming back into the ropes, and they move back into center ring. The left hook fires again. That was a glancing blow. Two pawing jabs and a good right shot to the belly, back to the head. Some of those punches were landing well on the chin of Joe Frazier. Jumbo Cummings pushes Frazier back into the ropes. Those punches are definitely landing. Joe Frazier's head is snapping. But certainly he couldn't go down now, even if he was in a condition to. Pinned against the ropes by 223 pounds of Jumbo Cummings. Another flashing left jab. By far the better boxer, Joe Frazier tonight. A flashing left jab. And there was the big left hook. It missed. Cummings isn't mugging as much now. There's a look on his face more of a studied attention, one might say, in between periods of perhaps a bit of weariness. 30 seconds are left in round number six. Many people didn't think it would last this long. But we're well past the halfway point of Joe Frazier's attempt to return as a credible heavyweight. Well, we have to call him credible so far tonight. 
In the corner, they flail away. And Joe Frazier again in the clinches now for the last several rounds has more than held his own. And that's six rounds now in history. One big worry about this fight for Joe Frazier fans and friends and family was that he might have suffered brain damage from the beatings he took in his earlier fights. They did brain scans, inspections, found no deterioration of his mental faculties, his reflexes. They claim that physically and mentally, the man is quite fit. Joe Frazier himself makes a compelling, even an eloquent argument that 37 is not all that old. But of course, in the world of boxing, there have been few who have done well much past that age. One thinks back to Jersey Joe Walcott winning the heavyweight title from Ezra Charles immediately after the post-war era. But perhaps that is really the exception that proves the rule. Joe Frazier tonight and Muhammad Ali coming up, of course, next week. Both bucking terrible odds in comeback attempts. Round number seven underway. Frazier lands the first shot. Cummings lands the next one. There was a glancing left hook. Not a completely solid punch, but solid enough. And Frazier obviously knows what he wants. He does not want a decision. He wants a knockout. Possibly some puffiness underneath the left eye of Joe Frazier, but it's difficult to tell. Still pawing greatly at each other. And Joe leaps in with another left hook. And that seemed to drive Jumbo Cummings back a bit. When they get in the clinches, it's now gone to more or less half and half in terms of advantage. At long range, though, Joe Frazier's looked pretty good. Certainly reflexes are not a problem. Endurance will have to be at age 37. Ring experience, no question about that. Joe Frazier by a mile. Assuming he hasn't forgotten anything. But Frazier on the stock now. The man looks like he meant it when he said he could take this heavyweight division apart. Few doubt that Joe Frazier could have done it in his prime. And now it's slug and slug back again. Rights and rights, back and forth. And there went the Frazier left hook in again. He doesn't seem to have the wild abandon of the left hook that we recall that knocked down Muhammad Ali in the 15th round of their first fight, but still a formidable punch. And there, three quick shots from Jumbo Cummings, and that didn't do Joe Frazier a bit of good either. Fighting in flurries now a great deal. Right hand from Frazier that is blocked. And once again, may I have this dance. Joe still likes to paw away at the opposing fighter's jab. I remember how many times he did that against Muhammad Ali in their three fights, batting that jab away. Cummings back to the tactic that worked in the beginning. Belting him in the stomach. But the hand behind the neck is a no no. That's not allowed. 30 seconds are left in round number seven. Ten rounder, Joe Frazier. Doesn't look ready for Larry Holmes yet, but he has certainly been more than ready for one Jumbo Cummings tonight. There was a tremendous left hook. Now that one had to be felt. A tremendous left hook from Joe Frazier, flush on the chin, and the jabs. He means it, folks. And Joe is happy in his corner. Jumbo sort of strolls back to his duel. Eighth round. This will be a round. Three rounds are left, seven done. If it should go to a decision, at this stage it would have to go to Joe Frazier, I think, who's come back from being back behind in the early going. One still finds it difficult to believe that these two bangers could possibly go that route. Of Joe Frazier's 32 victories, by far the vast majority, somewhere in the uh, late 20s probably, were knockouts. 12 of Jumbo Cummings' 17 victories have been knockouts. Giving instructions to uh, Jumbo Cummings in his corner. Meanwhile, back in Joe Frazier's corner, 
the mood seems a little bit more exultant or at least expectant than it was earlier. Son Marvis, himself an undefeated heavyweight prospect. Round eight now gets underway. Marvis watches Dad go out and land another one of those jabs. And Joe's been throwing the big leather. Jumbo really hasn't thrown a devastating punch in quite a while. The left hook missed again from Frazier. The Jumbo's been throwing a lot of good, solid punches in combinations. That Joe hasn't done him a great deal tonight. But Joe never was much of a combination puncher anyway. Joe was the big punch. And he's thrown some of them tonight. Round eight. A good right uppercut from Cummings. That was a solid one. Cummings is backing Frazier up now with some good body punches and shots to the head. Frazier fighting back with a good left hook to the jaw to temporarily stop that press into the ropes. It's certainly the best flurry by Jumbo Cummings in two or three rounds. Frazier with another good jab. Not as crisp as his earlier's, but uh, a solid jab nonetheless. Now they're trading the body blows. And that's one place where Joe's not going to win. Frazier pinned to the ropes. Not his accustomed position in fights. For years, he pinned him into the ropes. <laughs> that hand behind the head is going to cost Jumbo Cummings some points. Another good right uppercut, followed up by some other punches, and those are landing. And Jumbo Cummings is all over Joe Frazier. Frazier is leaning on and holding on. Cummings senses this could be it. He's right over us, pummeling Joe Frazier. Frazier pushed back into the ropes, taking a lot of body shots, trying to fight back, but taking the worst of it. Maybe the endurance factor has finally entered in. Cummings has Frazier pinioned to the ropes, leaning on him. And finally they break out. Headlocks don't count, Jumbo. Blood coming out of Joe Frazier's mouth. He used to bleed from the mouth a good deal in the alley fights. He doesn't cut around the eyes much. He lumps and pulps a lot, but... Come. 30 seconds left now in round number eight. Jumbo Cummings has come back strongly in this round. A series of punches that blew Joe Frazier into the ropes. And that's where Joe finds himself once again right now. He was looking good in the middle round. Landing the big left hook. Eight rounds are down, and now they go to work on that cut-up mouth of Joe Frazier. Son Marbus. That'll be rough for a kid. Watch his dad injured like that. The ice pack goes on the left side, so I think my earlier observation about the puffiness was quite correct under Joe Frazier's left eye. It's been a three-part fight so far. About the first three rounds, Jumbo Cummings doing a lot of body shots. There came after that a sudden resurgence of Joe Frazier's vaunted left hook and a snappy left jab. It looked like through about round seven that Joe Frazier was on the comeback trail. Round eight changed that uh, rather abruptly and dramatically. As a series of punches from Jumbo Cummings blasted Joe Frazier into the ropes directly over us where he pummeled him for a good 30 to 40 seconds. Joe emerged with a good deal of blood coming from the mouth. The fight has gone in ebbs and tides. Round nine is underway. We'll see if Cummings can keep it up or if Frazier can come back. There was a good right hand. Joe Frazier never used to throw much in the way of rights. But that one surely connected. Joe Frazier has lost none of his ring savvy. Maybe picked up a few things along the way. He can't rely on the brute strength anymore. There went the left hook, but to no avail. And through it all, it tends to be Frazier missing. An occasional jab snakes out from Jumbo Cummings, but he's not done a lot in this round. 
And apparently he doesn't think he has his man softened up to move in. Into the body by Cummings. Frazier goes up top. Definite puffiness under Joe Frazier's left eye now, but no vision problem, no cut. Cummings seems to be toying now, certainly not looking for the big punch, or if he is, he's not throwing any. Maybe Cummings thinks he's far enough ahead. A shaky proposition at best in this round eight. See shadows of the old Joe Frazier, but not consistently. Certainly in his prime, he would have put a Jumbo Cummings away in three rounds. No marks readily visible on Jumbo Cummings. Frazier again just took a good right, chopping right to the temple. Frazier left hook, more of a slap than a punch. Frazier, on the other hand, uh, somewhat marked blood around the mouth and a puppy eye. Cummings seems to be waiting for something. I'm not sure what it is. But Frazier at least ought to get an A for effort in this round, even if not everything is landing. There went the uh, big right cross. That one also a glancing blow, no damage. Oh, a good solid left hook, and that shook Jumbo Cummings' head back with a snap. Into the body, both fighters going at the body. Cummings the first one to elevate to the jaw again. But Joe Frazier, whatever else he's proven tonight, certainly knows he has the left hook still. Not as devastating, but there. About 20 seconds left in round number eight. And some more blood somewhere. That ends round number eight, and there is a we lot of blood somewhere. My correction, round, round number 10 coming up. That was the ninth round. A big burst of blood came down Joe Frazier's right arm just as that round ended. But where it came from is not immediately clear. We're trying to see if it's uh, anything from Jumbo Cummings at this point. They very cleverly use red towels, so you can't tell much in the way of a psychological advantage from that. Joe Frazier's white towel. Somewhat bloodied, but not a great deal more than it had been for a couple of three rounds. Nine rounds we have gone, and the tenth and final round is coming up. I'm sure neither fighter thought it would last this long. Both said they were prepared to go this long, and indeed so they have been. Not an artistic fight. Jumbo Cummings probably fighting at about his ability level right now. Joe Frazier, not quite the man he once was. This is it. All the marbles. See if anybody can land the big one. Although both may be too tired at this stage. Some big punches inside. Frazier and Cummings wailing away at each other. A shower of perspiration spraying across the ring. These two men weigh about 450 pounds put together. And they have been put together for nine big rounds. This is round number 10. Back to the belly, up to the shoulder. The Cummings punch landed on the shoulder. Frazier's punch wasn't much better. No one's thrown the really big leather. Neither man has been even close to being down. The best flurry of the fight, probably in round number eight. And Cummings had Frazier pinned against the ropes for some time. Oh, a tremendous shot. A right hand. Another one from Cummings on to Frazier. Frazier throwing leather right back, though, with his left. A left jab. The mouth bleeding is there again. The Cummings jolted Frazier. This could be a very decisive round. Each man's had his moments in this fight. Judges remember 10th round. Frazier backing up a little bit. And then inside with another left hook. But it didn't have a lot of steam on it. Neither fighter's had a lot of steam on his punches at this stage of the game. A jolting right uppercut. Certainly Jumbo Cummings has landed that enough times. Hasn't done the trick. 
but he did study his homework well. The same punch. Now Frazier's leaning in on Cummings. They're wailing away at each other. Frazier up against the ropes, looking very, very tired, perhaps a little older than he used to. And Cummings looks a little bit fresher than he used to. Both of Joe's eyes rather puffy now. The Frazier courage certainly hasn't left him. Joe's still swinging at everything he can see moving. And see he still can. The eyes aren't that closed. Even a little dancing there from Frazier. The tenth round comes to an end. His first fight back. And he has acquitted himself well, win or lose. We've got 30 seconds left in this fight. They're leaning on each other now. I don't think either man can knock the other over with a, a crowbar at this stage. Leaning all over each other. Cummings leaning up against the ropes. Frazier back on him. And that's it, folks. We're going to have a decision. And they are hugging each other. Joe Frazier and the man he inspired to a boxing career, Jumbo Cummings. Cummings used to watch Frazier when Frazier was an up-and-comer. And Cummings was just another inmate in the Stateville Correctional Center in Joliet, Illinois. Jumbo Cummings used to worship the man. Tonight he tried to beat the daylights out of him. One would have to say Cummings on the first part of the fight and the last part of the fight. In between, Joe Frazier had to be the man. And I would honestly say that I don't believe this is by any means a decision that will be all that lopsided. There's the bell. They are tallying up the ballots. This is on the 10-point must system. Winner of a round gets 10 points. Loser gets nine or fewer. And again, Joe Frazier had the middle rounds. The beginning and the end probably belong more to Jumbo Cummings. The crowd, of course, is milling all around the stadium right now, the, uh, the ring. Each fighter getting into his robe. Well, I should say one is. Joe Frazier is still out of his robe. He's gone over to shake hands with Jumbo Cummings. Jumbo reciprocates. They had their share of pre-fight babbling at each other. But they clearly do respect and like each other. Particularly Jumbo Cummings. After all, he just beat up on a hero tonight for 10 rounds. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official decision as seen and scored by the judges and referee, Judge Collins Brown, 46, 46, a draw. I told you it was close. Two out of three votes, a draw. It is a draw. Joe Frazier has the first draw of his career. Incredible, a draw after all of that hoopla, all the worry. Would Joe Frazier be pounded into dust? Would Smoke and Joe come back and it ends in a draw? One judge did vote for one point for Cummings, that was the referee. But that doesn't count, although you could say he has the majority in that regard.